Hi and hello guys. Today in this video, let me show you all as to how you can get this Google Assistant unofficial desktop client up and running on your Windows PC or a laptop. So the credit for this work goes to Melvin and I am just making a how to video to help you guys go through the installation process. So without any further delay, let us get started. So the first step in this process is to generate a credentials file or register your device in the Google Actions console and Cloud console. So first let me show you as to what you need to do to register your device or create a credentials file in the Actions console or Cloud console. So head over to uh, console.actions.google.com first. Uh, if you are prompted to sign in, sign in using your uh, Google credentials. In the console window, just scroll down below until you find an option which says new project. Click on that and assign your project a name. You can give whatever you want. I would advise you to give your project a name without any space just to be safe once again. Okay. You can leave the language options as it is or you can change that. It's your preference and then click on create project. So do not click on any of these options that you see at the top. Please do not click on them. If you scroll down, you will see an option that says, are you looking for registering? Uh, are you looking for device registration? Click on the click here option. In the device registration page, click on register model. Give your product a name. And uh, you can assign whatever manufacturer name you want. The device type can be anything, but I will set it to speaker and now click on register model. So you can download the credentials file by clicking on the download uh, OAuth 2.0 credentials button. Save this credentials file to some directory on your computer or Raspberry Pi. Uh, we will need this for setting up the Google Assistant SDK. Choose next. You can select the trains if you want or you can just uh, skip skip this part I would suggest you to leave this window open uh, we will need this window or the information for setting up the Google Assistant SDK so now after this head over to Google uh, developer console or cloud console as usual I will leave the link for this in the description of this video okay click on the tab right at the top which says select a project click on the drop down menu or option and now you'll be prompted to select a project. In this window, select the project that you just created. Now click on the library option on your left. In the search bar type assist or assist and immediately you should have the Google Assistant API option appear. Click on that and then choose enable. So after this, there are a couple of more steps. Please do not rush. Click on the hamburger icon on your top left. Choose API and services and then credentials. Right below, you should have an option which says OAuth consent screen. Click on that. Uh, the internal option is available only for G Suite uh, users. So we are not one of them. So choose external and then choose create. Um, if you just uh, click on the user support email option immediately your email ID should appear select your email ID so you can leave the fields under the app domain option blank uh, you need not fill that see if you scroll down below you will have a space that says developer contact uh, information use the email address that you use to create the project that will be the developer contact information and now click on save and continue you can leave this section blank. Uh, you need not touch anything over here. Proceed by clicking on save and continue. So all the information in this window is also optional. Choose save and continue. If you scroll down below, you should see a button which says uh, back to dashboard. Click on that. Say now if you immediately close this and try running the Google Assistant, you cannot go through the authorization process. You will get a 403 error. So to avoid that, you need to add a user 
under the test users option you will see a button that says add users click on that and then in the space provided over here type in the email address using which you will be performing the google assistant sdk authorization so the email address in this page should match the email address that you will be using for authorizing the google assistant sdk okay so that is it so that is how you set up your project in google actions console and cloud console for google assistant sdk projects okay so now that we have got the credentials file ready we need to download the desktop client application or software head over to melvin abraham's git or the google assistant unofficial desktop client github page i will leave the link for this in the description of this video once you are into the github page you should see an option that says releases on your right click on the releases option in this video we'll be installing this application on a windows machine so what we need is the .exe file click on this exe link to download the file okay so now i have got the google assistant setup file to set up the google assistant just double tap on that and now you'll be presented with an option to either install the assistant only for the current user or you can install this assistant for all the user accounts on this pc by selecting on the first option this one is absolutely your choice choose next choose install okay so now we have got the google assistant installed leave this box checked and choose finish at the first instance you will have the google assistant running minimized on the tray double tap on that to enlarge it or maximize it initially the gear icon or the settings option will be disabled click on the get started button and then click on proceed button now it will say that you don't have an authentication file and at this point you should have the gear icon enabled click on this gear icon and first option will be the authentication option under the authentication tab you will have the key file path which is empty right now and against that you should have a browse button click on this browse button and then select the credentials file that you just downloaded from the google's action console choose open you can leave the path to the tokens empty and then choose save click on automatically set a path and now you will be prompted to relaunch click on relaunch assistant immediately and immediately you should have a browser tab open just follow the on screen instructions to authenticate the google assistant select a google account or sign in into your google account and when you see a message or a prompt that google hasn't verified this app etc so on and so forth click on continue choose allow and finally choose allow once again click on this authentication token and copy that head back to the assistant gui and paste the authentication token in the space provided after that click on submit once again after the tokens are saved you will be prompted to relaunch click on relaunch assistant okay so now the assistant is ready for interaction how is the weather in new york now currently in new york city new york it's minus 1 degree and cloudy today it'll be cloudy with a forecast high of minus 1 and a low of minus 2 Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's minus seven. So as it is, this assistant or the program doesn't come with the OK Google or any other custom backward options. So I will show you a roundabout approach to have the backwording enabled or to enable the interaction with the assistant using a custom backward. Down the line, the developer will probably add 
the wake wording option and at that time you can skip this uh, custom wake word approach that I am going to show you now. Okay, so this is a time being stop gap arrangement until the developer enables the wake wording option. Okay, so the first step is to go into the settings, scroll down, and enable microphone on application startup and choose save. Okay, so now you can close this for this wake word setup we need two applications or two files one is the assistant shortcut.exe file that i have created on my own and then we need a software called voice macro okay so what this assistant shortcut.exe file will do is it will simulate the key press needed to initiate or start a conversation with the assistant just watch what happens when i double click on the exe file What is the time in London now? The time in London, UK is 5.50 p.m. So, when I double tap on this exe file, the conversation with the assistant starts. How tall is the Burj Khalifa? The Burj Khalifa is 828 meters tall. Okay. So, this is what this .exe file does. So, when you run this exe file for this first time, your antivirus might scan this file. So, there is no harm done. Just allow your antivirus to scan this file. And if your antivirus marks this as a false positive, just make sure to add this as an exception. Okay. So, proceeding further, set up the voice macro software. Sometimes, at the first instance, you might be prompted to install a .NET software. So, just follow the on-screen instructions and install the .NET software. So, even after the installation of the .NET software, if you are prompted for the installation again, just choose the ignore option that you will get on the screen. Okay. So, just a note of caution or a clarification. Now, choose next, choose next and next. Choose yes and then close to exit okay now we need to set up the voice macro open the voice macro software choose no we don't want a demo right now as it is you won't have any profiles created click on edit choose add new and under profile name give your profile a name i'm giving it the name a google assistant choose ok now we should have a profile created and we should have the macro option enabled click on add new check this box which says voice command macro name ok so this is the command that will wake the assistant or start the interaction with the assistant so Commands like OK Google or Alexa are very niche commands which this voice macro probably may not pick up at all. So, I would suggest you to give it a common name, something like Jennifer, Adam, Computer, or Assistant, or Butler, or something like that, okay, which is very common and which is very easy to be recognized. In this case, I am calling it Jennifer, okay. And after you give it a name, click on other and then choose execute or open a file. Click on the tab or a button with the three dots and then select the assistant shortcut file that I previously showed you guys. Click on the assistant underscore shortcut dot exe, choose open and choose ok and choose ok and finally click on save. So now we have got the assistant or the voice macro actively listening. Make sure to uncheck this auto tab and click on the hamburger icon and choose the minimize instead close option. So now observe what happens when we give the wake word. Jennifer, how is the weather in Vancouver? 
Right now in Vancouver it's minus 1 degree and cloudy. Today, there'll be snow, with a forecast high of 1 and a low of minus 2. There is currently a snowfall warning in effect. Okay, you can have this minimized to the tray and even then, if you give the wake word, the assistant should pop up. Jennifer, how is the weather in New Delhi? Right now in New Delhi, it's 17 degrees with fog. Tonight, the forecast is around 14 and partly cloudy. Jennifer, convert 10 euros to US dollars. 10 euros equals 12 dollars and 12 cents. Okay, so easy peasy guys. So that is how you can have this Google Assistant desktop client working with a wake word. Okay, so I really hope that you guys find this video useful and informative. So thanks for watching. Take care and bye-bye.